Okay, so hello, Carrie. Hello, Andrew. And today we're going to focus on photo compositing in Photoshop. So we have a variety of images here, and I can also cycle through. So um, should I go over just kind of using like the select tools first on some of the images? Okay. Okay, so I'm cycling through. So this will be a strong image to work on. So. <clears throat> Okay, so in the uh, toolbar, about the fourth, one, two, three, yep, one, two, three, four, fifth one down, you have the quick selection tool and the magic wand tool. So just to go over both, uh, magic wand tool is if you had a kind of solid color backgrounds. This, this color is pretty good, except for where it gets down to the brown of the kind of horizon level. But so when you click, it selects area of similar color. And then if you hold shift, you get the plus sign. And then as you shift again, it keeps adding. And then the thing to remember in general, when you're using any tools to always look up at the options bar at the top. So you always look at the options bar to see what uh, options you have related to that specific tool. So the sample size is five by five average. So the lower it is, the more kind of uh, focused it is. And then the larger it is, the more it would grab variations of color. So 101 by, 100 by 101 average would, even though I'm click, clicking on like the pinkish color, it might click all the colors. So I try to keep it to a lower number. Okay. And then tolerance is also like strength. So if I have it at 13, like I have now, or 10, then when I click it, it's focusing on a particular color, whereas the higher that number would be, the more colors it would select. So this is if you have like a solid color background, I just keep shift clicking. I'm trying to get rid of those kind of little marching ants areas, so it becomes more of a solid selection. And as you can see, this is kind of a lot of work for, for this because of the different uh, variations. I could try to make the tolerance a little higher, and then when I click, you'll see that larger areas get selected. But I have to keep shift clicking, shift clicking, shift clicking until it becomes more of a solid selection. So this is usually best when it's just a solid color background, green or white, you know, something that's behind the, the model or the subject. <clears throat> so it's a bit, of, a bit of a work. So I go up to select, deselect, or in my case, I like to use keyboard shortcuts. So command D, as you can see on the right. And then what I'll do instead is I'll go to the little triangle on the corner of that tool, fifth one down, and choose the quick selection tool. So now in this case, I have like a little brush and I use my left bracket to make it smaller or right bracket to make it larger. I keep it kind of small, especially um, going around edges. And then you just click and drag. And as you click and drag, as you can see, already it's selected the figure pretty well. Um, and then what I do is I go down to the bottom and I double click this icon, which is the quick mask options. I have it set to selected areas and quick mask will give me a preview, like a mask preview of how good my selection is. So it's a solid green here and I can make it any color. So I could say, okay, well, let's preview it as, you know, a red. And then when I hit okay, it shows like a red preview. In this case, I think green is fine, so I'll just go back. Take it. And this is just to show you um, your selection. So yeah, so if I hit Q, it shows me this, how good the selection is. And so areas like around uh, behind her leg here, I might zoom in, Command Plus on a Mac, Control Plus on a PC, and then holding the Option key, I would click Oh, okay, I'm in quick mass, so I have to get out of quick mass uh, temporarily. So I hit Q again. And then while I'm just in the selection with the quick selection tool, I make sure I hold down the option keys, which gives me a minus sign. And then I can go into that little area and kind of erase. And if it overlaps, it's all right, because if I go back to quick mask mode, the beauty of quick mask mode is you can use your brush and you can paint selections. So if I paint now when it's black, it adds to that selection. So I can paint in the selection. So to get to the quick mask, you either do the control Q or you click on that little. Well, it's not control Q, it's just Q. 
So you have to okay. But the thing is, before you use it, you should click on the icon underneath the foreground and background colors. Okay. And make sure it's set to selected. If it's okay. set to mask, then it's the opposite of what you want to focus on. So I, I don't even know why this is really an option. I think it should always just be defaulting to selected areas. Okay. When you have it to selected areas, then you know that you're selecting your subject. So yeah, so if you hit Q, it just gives you a preview. Um, and then you can paint when you have a paintbrush while in quick mask mode. So you can paint your selection or subtract paint from your selection. I just like it because it's a way that I can do a selection, then get a nice visual preview, and then I can paint my selection. And I like the kind of natural feel of that. Okay. So I might clean up around her hair here. So I hit the left bracket, make the brush smaller, hold down option. Oh, so you gotta get out of quick mask again. <laughs> I'm doing two things at once here. And then um, when I, no, I did want to be in quick mask, but I don't know why it wasn't taking it. Every time I hit the, okay, I want to switch that. I'm, I'm mixing the two up. So if, if it's black as foreground color, you want to switch it to white. So I just hit the little double arrow here. And then when I paint, I can erase from that selection. And just make sure that the opacity up in the options bar is set to 100, so it's a solid kind of erase. Go into those little areas. I'm not gonna get too crazy about all the little details of, of the strings of the hair, but, but yeah. So yeah, so in the quick mask mode, it's, it's black or white foreground color. So black, you'd be painting in the selection. White would let you erase from the selection when you use the brush in quick mask mode. Okay. When you are in the selection itself and you're in that quick selection tool, you hold down the option key to erase from the selection and otherwise it's set to automatically add to the selection. Okay? Okay. So here's the other figure. So I'm in the quick selection tool and it's set to add. So when I click and drag, it's adding to that selection. And see how it picked up like the legs and the feet already? I mean, it's pretty nice when it's a solid image like that. Yes. And then to take away that area around the fingers, I hold down option. Maybe I'll hit the left bracket to make my brush smaller. And then as I click, it will, uh, you know, kind of erase from that selection. So when I hit Q. Oh, that's just, awesome. Yeah, it does a pretty good job. Maybe around here, I'll hold down option and do that. And then it defaults back to selecting mode. So without holding option, I just click and drag. It makes a selection. So yeah, so there's that. So if I zoom out, when I get that far, I then click on the, I right click to get the contextual menu and I choose feather, which will soften the edge. And then I will do like a 0 0.8 or a one, maybe just a one on this one. And that just feathers the edge, which softens it slightly. So it doesn't look too hard. And then if I do command J, I'll make a new layer from the selection. Or if I do command option J, I can title it. So I'll just call it figures. And so when I turn off the background with the I icon in the layers panel, you'll see selection. It's now on its own layer. So if I choose the top tool, the move tool, I can then move it wherever I want. And then I can move that into another document for my photo composite. Cool. Yeah, so that's a review of the quick selection tool and the quick mask and quick mask options. So that's pretty helpful. Okay. I've never used quick mask, so that would yeah, be fun to play around with. Yeah, it's a nice way to work because it just gives you a nice, uh, kind of visual preview so you can see how how well your selection is and then you can like I said you can go back and paint with the brush to add or to subtract from your selection okay so so let's try it on this one where it's more of a you know a realistic image not just a silhouette so I start off with the quick selection tool and make the brush a little bit bigger 
it's still small. And I just kind of click and drag. And I don't get too close to the edges because I don't want it to bleed out into the background. But I get semi close and I just kind of follow the shape of the subject. It's bleeding out here a little bit. So when it bleeds out above his arm, I hold down option and I gently paint towards the edge of his arm. And then it subtracts from the selection. And then with the hand, I see it also selected that. So I'll zoom in and I use that. I'm zoomed in and then I hold down the space bar to move my image. I can see my brush is a bit big, so I use that left bracket on my keyboard, and then holding Option, when I click, it's subtracting. So option, click, subtracts. Does a pretty good job. Same here, between the two legs, I will Option, click, and it does a good uh, deselecting of that area. And then it defaults back to selecting mode. So when I click and drag here, it's now adding the sneaker. I gently, like I said, I don't go too close to the edges because I don't want it to bleed out. Um, if it's stubborn, then I will get a little bit closer, but I'm just kind of focusing on the shape itself, not the edge. And then I'll click and drag. Keep dragging around the shape, gently following it. <clears throat> Follow it down the board. <clears throat> so it's trying to you know, find the edge and differentiate it from the, the light colored background and do a selection. It's kind of hard because the skateboard just kind of fades into the... Yeah, yeah. but it's, it's doing a pretty good job. It seems yeah. to be finding the edge, which is good. Some of this area I want to select. Okay, and then I see that this area, so I hit Q to see where I am so far. So oh, cool. Yeah, so it's pretty good. So then I just go back and add a little bit of this shoelace, and then I want to option click around the hand. But I think that deselected, so I do a Command Z, and if you wanna go back further, I do Command Option Z couple times. So I'm holding option to deselect from that area. And then I'm back to adding to the selection just by using the brush. So painting here. So option in that area. And then space bar to move up to the bottom. And then I just Click and drag gently down. And then I'm following the end of the skateboard. A little bit on the bottom. Following the little wheels here. <clears throat> and then option, click that little middle area. Now I hit Q again. So it looks like it's a pretty solid Selection. You're, you're missing a finger tip. Oh, at the top? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I hit Q again, and then it <laughs> defaults to the add to selection. So I just click gently down to get the finger. And then when I hit Q again, it's pretty solid. Nice. So once again, you know, if the, that's, you know, uh, let's see if I got this. Okay, so this area is a big area. Oh. So option click here and then click to deselect that area. Now when I click, it's pretty solid. So once again, I start off quick selection tool, then I'll hit Q for quick mask, and then I'll switch over to my brush, and then I'll look around and see if there's anything that needs a little bit of tweaking. So then I see that like the tip of his finger might need to be added, so I just go and I paint while the foreground color is in black, and it adds to the quick mask. And then I notice that there's some space between the two fingers. So I left bracket, make the brush smaller and hold down option. Or, I mean, I flip it to the white 
I'm combining the tools at times, funny. Um, so I flip, flip it to white, so then when I have it white as my foreground color and I paint, that'll subtract from the selection. So I have a question. When sure. I worked on this this picture and, and did what you did, um, I ended up going in and erasing the edges, some of the edges if they weren't nice and smooth. Is that a good or a bad thing to do? Oh, you mean like erasing itself? Yeah. yeah. Like if, if there was an area, like you're using the quick mask, but I didn't do it at the time. So when I put it on its own layer and saw that there was rough edges, I would just take the eraser tool and erase the, the roughness away. Right. So I'll show you a better option. So when you're making these selections to then be able to, you know, make a new layer, it's always best to make a layer mask. So when you make okay. a layer mask, you have the option of adding or taking away from it without it being destructive. Okay. So when you use the eraser tool, it becomes destructive. And so if you save your document and you went back, whatever you erased would be gone permanently erased. Okay, gotcha. Okay, so here's the selection. And it's good. It's not absolutely perfect, but for time's sake, mm -hmm. I think it's good enough. So I do a command minus to zoom out a little bit. Hit Q again to take an overall look, and it looks pretty good. There's the areas of negative space are cut out nicely. So what I do is I hover my brush over subject, and then if it, since I'm in the brush, it's bringing up the brush uh, options. So I'm going to click out, so I go back to either the quick selection tool or the marquee, and then when I right click, I'll get the contextual menu with the option to feather. So I'll say one feather. And then instead of making its, its own layer, what I'll do this time is I will add a layer mask, but I'll hold down the option key when I click. Well, not option key. So I guess just adding layer mask is fine. I, I, I work both ways. So just when it's in the selection, just clicking the layer mask option will knock out the background. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So Very that, nice. So yeah, the grid in the back is showing transparency. And then you can see that there might be some remnants. So if you choose your brush, and then you make sure that black is the foreground tool. So they say black conceals, white reveals. So black will erase when you're in a layer mask. And then if you wanted to bring something back, you would switch it to white. So I'm hitting the X key to switch black and white. So I'm not going to keep this, but just to show you if I, with white, if I were to paint here, it would be bringing back some of the background. Okay, gotcha. I'll just do a command C to get out. Mm -hmm. But as you can see, if I hold down the shift key, it turns off the layer mask temporarily. If I hold down option and click on that layer mask, you'll see that that's the mask. Mm -hmm. So whatever's white is the subject, whatever's black is being deleted or, you know, knocked out temporarily. But that's the beauty of layer masking is you can always paint back. So yeah, black erases in the layer mask, white brings back. So if you were to like the bottom, the bottom right half of the skateboard, okay. you could use the white to bring, like if there's any of the skateboard missing, you could use the white to bring it back? Right, so if, as long, okay, so here's an important, aspect to that. If you look over in the layers panel, you'll see there's like a white frame around the image. You always have to be in the layer mask. So to be in the layer mask, you click on it in the middle and then you see there's like a white frame around it. Mm -hmm. So let me just show you, it's always best to show. So if I, if it looked like this, where there's a white frame around the image and then I thought I was going to do a layer mask, you'll notice that it picked up like the last color I clicked on. It's not even black and white. And therefore, if I paint, it's painting okay. blue itself, right? So you have to be very aware to make sure it's on the layer mask. And once I click on that black and white icon, there's a white frame around it. Uh -huh. And that means I'm in the layer mask. So now you see that the colors at the bottom default to black and white. And so if I were to paint with black, it would erase from the image. Mm -hmm. And then therefore, if I switch it by pressing the... X key or this double arrow. When it's at white, I can bring back. So I could make a small brush and I could go over 
Okay. Yeah, over the bottom part, okay. bring back some of that. Uh, All right. Yeah. That's helpful. Thank you. And then if I switch it to black, then I can get rid of some of the extra that's around it. And you might obviously want to zoom in. So when you zoom in, Command Plus, you can do a nice clean erase. And a good trick is if you're doing something that's semi-straight, you click on one area, you hold shift and then click again and it does like a straight line. So then it kind of takes some of the hard work out. So instead of having to follow that whole shape, I just can click once, shift click, and it does kind of like a straight line for me. Cool. Same up here, I can click here, shift click down there, and it follows that shape. Okay, so I zoomed out, command minus, and I'm in the full screen view. I hit F, the F key, gives me a neutral gray background. That's what I set my preferences. So if I hit F again, I get black. Once more, I'm back into this uh, floating document. And I'll just remember that this is um, 3661, and I'll do a, on a Mac, control tab to jump through images. So I'll find another kind of, so just for fun, I'll have this image. And then I, if you go up to the window menu, you'll see all of your open documents. So I can then go down to the 3661. That pops up. Make sure I'm in the move tool. Click on the image, not the layer mask, to make sure it's gonna select my image. And when I click and drag, hmm. it jumps it over to the... <laughs> <laughs> now, funny course, size, of course. Is, is there a way to make make that just solid black? That that image? Yes. So it's similar to the other silhouettes. Sure. Yes. Okay. So I always like to give myself options, and that's the beauty of working with layers. That's cool. So with this one, you know, it's still in the layer mask mode, but I could say, you know, at this point, I'll I'll make it solid. So I'll go up to layer, layer mask, and say apply. And now it's the layer mask has been kind of applied, and so therefore the background's been deleted. I'll keep this as it is, but then I will make a quick duplicate by just doing Command J. So it makes layer one copy. So as an example, that's there, and the other one's there to the right. So now that it's layer one copy, I just click on this first icon where it says lock, and that is locking the transparent pixels. And so if I then say edit fill, and I think I can oh. also, yeah, so I say edit fill and set to foreground color, which is black, or I could click here and choose black down here as well. When it fills, it fills just the shape because I clicked on lock transparent pixels in the lock area. Huh. And so now, yeah, so now he's a silhouette too. Cool. And then if I do Command T, I get this bounding box and then holding Option Shift, I can resize him down. He's still not gonna look <laughs> realistic in this composition so much, even though he's similar to the other silhouettes. Yeah. The idea of a skateboarder in the middle of the- uh, In the middle of the water. the ocean, yeah. <laughs> but it kind of, it fits a little bit more. You know? Kind of similar in size, I can make it even smaller. Yeah. And T, option shift. So he's jumping over the yeah. back there. <laughs> okay. So yeah, so command J will make a duplicate of the layer. It's a nice way of working. Um, and just remember, you know, I locked the transparent pixels to fill it with black. If I wanted to paint or erase from that layer at all, I'd have to unlock the transparent pixels. So then with the brush, if I set it to that blue color, it would paint on the layer. Okay. If the lock transparent pixels was clicked on, when I go to paint, oh, that's interesting. All right, so that's the right layer. Lock transparent pixels. Okay, so lock transparent pixels. So that means that anything that's transparent, you can't paint on. So I could paint on the subject, but I can't paint on the background. 
So just remember that that's how you fill with like a solid color, like black and it protects the transparent pixels. Okay. Okay. So that's, you know, selections, fill, you know, duplicating a layer, filling it with color. Uh, let's see. Do we want to work on some other ideas? I'd love to. Yes. Okay. So let's see. Still funny though, right? <laughs> yeah, that's great. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Jumping over the rock. Gives me lots of ideas. <laughs> so just a, an idea on this one. If I wanted to take out, you know, the seagull at the bottom, you know, first I always do a command J so I can make it its own layer. And then in this case, the background in relationship to the subject is similar. Like the cloud is similar to the edge of the, the seagull's feathers. So what I do is I go to either image adjustments levels, or as you can see on the right command L and then do a simple tonal correction to kind of pop up the contrast. So for a quick kind of levels lesson, this is your darks, this is your midtones, and this is your lights. So if I move the light slider to the left to where this kind of histogram begins, it bumps up the, the highlights. Okay. This is your midtones. So if I go to left, it's lightening your midtones. If I go to the right, it would darken them. Oh. And then when you're at your darks, you can only go to the right, which would mean that it would darken your darks. But if you look down to the output levels just below, the output levels for the darks, if you go to the right, would lighten your darks. But obviously make subtle movements. You don't want to uh, blow out your image. But those are, so therefore on the right side, the highlights, this would mean that if you go to the left, it would bring down some of those highlights because you can only go from the right to the left at the top to make the highlights brighter. So therefore at the bottom, making the output level of the highlights to the left would bring it down the highlights. So by doing that adjustment, it makes it easier to select Correct. the blue against the clouds. Right, so I'm clicking on the preview uh, check mark. So this is before, and everything's kind of washed, a little washed out. Then when I hit the preview button, there's more of contrast. So there, the edges will be uh, detected easier. Right. So I'm gonna do that first. And it's on its own layer, so it's protected if I wanted to keep the original. And then I go back up to that um, quick selection tool. And then I click and pull. And now it's differentiating, say, the edges of the feathers a bit better from the clouds without doing that tonal correction with the levels. <clears throat> it That's might, great. Yeah, it might end up being, you know, kind of a struggle with the tool. So now it's kind of a bit more differentiated. Yeah, there it goes. Okay, so then when it overlaps like that, remember that when you're in the quick selection tool, you hold down the option key or alt on a PC and then you click and drag in the kind of negative space area gently okay. to erase that area. And then once I let go of the alt key or option key, I'm back to the add to selection. So I just click, drag gently to add to it. And I just have the right feathers. I go follow the edge. So its wing is more solid now, just a little bit more feathers. I'm learning a lot because this has been something that I've struggled with. Yeah, it's a pretty good tool, the quick, quick uh, selection tool. Um, you, can, you can select an uh, object much easier than the magic wand. Magic wand is really, you'd have to have kind of a solid colored background. And then I hit Q to preview. And so it looks like just the highlight at the top. So I'll zoom in, Command plus, Control plus on a PC. And I click and drag by that highlighted white areas. And almost there. 
Nice. Yeah, it's pretty good. Just a little bit more here. And it looks like it overlapped a little bit, so I'll hold down the Option key, Alt on PC, and then just do that edge a little bit, and I'll take away some. It's sometimes there's areas that are a struggle. So if it's a struggle, that's when I will hit Q, then choose my brush tool, make sure it's small, and then make sure that it's set to black to paint. And when I paint on that edge, it's painting oh, okay. the selection. Yeah, I use, I use this, these tools kind of together. That's pretty good. Okay, and then remember you have to go back from the brush tool to the quick selection tool, right click in the middle of your selection, then you can choose a feather. And then now that I have a top layer, I can click on the add layer mask option and when I turn off the other one you can see I made a nice selection from that. Excellent. Great. Okay. Cool. So let's, so let me show you some um, issues with like bl layer blending modes, some creative ideas with that. So let's see. So if you're going to do a photo composite, uh, what I would recommend is a lot of times you would, want to set it up to a specific size that you know you're going to print. So then, therefore, you go to File, New, or Command N, Control N on a PC. If you're in Photoshop CC 2018 and some of the previous years, you'll see this kind of template for the spectrum of, of different templates for the new document. So if you go to, as an example, Print, you'll get um, letter, legal, tabloid. Now, something that's, I've noticed it's a little strange though. I don't know why these presets are defaulting to an incorrect pixels per inch. So the resolution is off. Uh, so that's one thing to just be aware of is, I think it might be just a bug, but if I click on the print a template selection, I have letter, legal, tabloid, and they all have incorrect uh, PPI. So 0 0.025 is <laughs> outrageously low um, resolution. So just be aware that if I want to do one that's like a legal size, eight and a half by 14, I can, at the top part, I can call it whatever I want, so photo composite. What should it be if it's wrong there? Well, well that's what I'm getting to. So okay. yeah, so I just click on the template first, then I can give it um, a name. Okay. Then the, the eight and a half by 14 is correct, but then the resolution is incorrect. It's like one. So if okay. it's going to be for print, it should be 300. Okay. And if it's going to be for, say, Facebook, it can be 72. But even so, um, I've noticed that uh, it's kind of a myth, the whole idea of like, unless you are working for someone who has a specific size, the the image the document needs to be. I say it cannot be larger than 250K. Mm -hmm. Then I don't, I don't focus on resolution too much um, because if you're posting to say like Facebook or a Facebook page, um, I've noticed that larger uh, dimensions are better. So, I mean, you could, st you could have eight and a half by 14 at 150 or 300. And then when you upload it to Facebook, it'll do its own compression. Okay. So, but if this is for print, then you should always want to make sure it's 300 pixels per inch. Okay. Because that's better quality for printing. More pixels equals better quality. And then it's set to RGB, white background. And then if you go down to the bottom for color profile, it's defaulting to sRGB. If you know that your output house or printer prints with Adobe RGB, you could set it to that. Um, if they say they only do, they would, they themselves would convert it to sRGB. You might as well just choose sRGB from the get go. Okay. Um, but in this lesson, I'll just say Adobe RGB. And then when you hit create, it creates a new white background document. So an example, I could click on some of the elements. I could grab this image. So I just, let me do that again. So I 
choose this document, this image, and I look over at my layers panel on the right, and I can grab the background layer and just drag it over as long as I'm in the top tool, the move tool. And I have it so in the options bar, it's set to auto select layer. That way, if I had multiple layers, whatever I click on is selected and then I can move it around. Okay. So I'll do that. And then maybe I'll close this while I do that. And then I'm going to control tab to cycle through. Let's see what other. Those notes that you just had were written by, to me by this, my daughter. <laughs> oh, okay, fun, fun. Kind of puts it all together. <laughs> sure. And then here's another image, so I can bring that to the forefront. I see the background. Now, if you want to center an image when you drag over the background, you hold shift into the new document, and then it'll center. Oh, okay. Yeah. Kind of close that. <clears throat> so in this case, what I might want to do is... Um, I don't, I don't really want to distort it too much, but uh, maybe I'll make this, well, I'll see what I can do. So I hit F to go into full screen view. I like to work um, very focused. So I like to hit F to be in this full screen view so I don't see all the floating other documents. I have a neutral gray background so I can see color nicely as well. Okay. If I'm going to resize a, a placed layer, I go over to the layers panel, I right click, and I say convert to smart object. It then has this little icon in the bottom right. So when I do a command T to transform, when I resize it, it's keeping a lot of the original information of that image. And so when I resize it, there's less pixelization and distortion. Okay. So I'll do option shift. When I do option shift, it's constraining it proportionally. Um, and then I can resize it accordingly. If I wanted to distort it, I could just go to the bottom and then kind of stretch it. Mm -hmm. so maybe I'll do that just for the sake of this lesson, even though most times you will not want to distort it. But in this case, I kind of want it to fill the background, so I, I don't mind. And then, if, as I said, in the options bar, it's set to auto select layer. So if I click here, it jumps and knows that I want to be in this layer. So the same thing, I will right click. Okay, so you wanna do it over the name, not on the icon. So over the name, I can then convert it to smart object. Command T, option shift, and I can make it larger. So this one, I'll, I won't uh, distort, I'll just make it larger than the bounding areas. And so before I bring over the, uh, the girl's image, I just wanna kind of show you the beauty of blending modes. So if you click where it says normal to the right, you have all these different different blending modes. So you first area is, you know, it says dark and multiply. So these are how the layer on top will interact with the layer underneath um, by like darkening. So where like if you had a signature, like a black pen signature on a white background and you set it to say multiply, the white would get knocked out and the black would be extenuated. Okay. And then, so the opposite happens with the next grouping. So light and screen would, would make it so dark areas would get knocked out and lighter areas would become more pronounced. And then overlays kind of like mid range, also very good, like overlays very good for, um, if you wanted to bring a texture like stone or leaves and add it to like a portrait, it kind of blends nicely and brings out the, the details of the portrait still, but bringing into that texture. And then these ones, difference exclusion, I kind of see as almost like filters. Um, and then the last one is like related to color, hue, saturation, color, luminosity, and how the top layer interacts with the bottom layer. But the, the good thing is, is without having to get too caught up with how these little sections work, once you're in the top layer, if you hold down shift and then hit your plus key, as long as you're in the move tool, the top, it'll cycle through. I'm not sure if it's the same on a PC. I know on a Mac it's shift plus. Um, you might have to experiment with that one, but it's- You can just use the arrow key to scroll down through them. Right, you could, it's just that takes more time you know, okay. to do it manually. Um, but there must be a, a keyboard shortcut, but it's, for me on a Mac, it's just shift plus, and then I cycle through. And then you'll see how nicely oh. 
it, the two blend. So you get different, yeah, you get two different effects. And so the way I work is I'll just cycle through without even being concerned with the different sections of what the, the blending mode will do. I'm just looking for the effect I want. Right. So I'll just kind of cycle through and I'll say, oh, that's kind of interesting. You know, something like that where it's, it's making the text that's underneath kind of cut through the image. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. I like the way the color comes through the spirals. Yeah, exactly. So that's pin light. Some of them are a little, a little harsh. That's hard mix, so it's a little strong. Difference is interesting. So difference will always kind of combine these colors and, and do like a, a negative of what the colors were. So where a lot of those areas were kind of pink and orange are now purple and green. Mm -hmm. And then when you get down to hue, you'll see that it took the kind of pinkish orange color theme and add it to the text below. Saturation to kind of an extreme version. And then once again, color did the same thing where it took the color of the top layer with the orange and the pinks and add it to the text below in a kind of more saturated way. And then luminosity just kind of strips out the color for most part and does this yeah. black and white. So now if I do shift minus, I can cycle back. And so I'm just looking for that pin light one, which is here. So I get this kind of creative effect. And then, I like that. I, yeah, it's, it's, I, I find blending layer blending modes very um, satisfying, just to, very easy to get like a, a very creative effect just by going through layer blending modes. Um, a lot of times people think they have to go up to the filter and then do all this kind of color grading or this or that. But a lot of times layer blending modes will give you a nice effect. Yeah. So control tab, I will cycle through my images. And I'll find a nice photo of it's your daughter, correct? Yes. Yes, great photo. And then I'll go to window, so I will see all my open documents. I'll go to photo composite. And then I can go here. And then once again, background, just drag it over. And it, it's telling me here that just the, there's a different kind of color profile mismatch. So the source is sRGB, the destination is Adobe RGB. It's just saying that the portrait of your daughter is sRGB, it's going into an Adobe RGB 1998 color profile. Okay. It's fine, it should, shouldn't change so much. So then there it is, so I hit F, so I don't have to see all the images in the behind. I will right click on that top layer, convert to smart object. You'll see the icon in the bottom right, command T, to bring up the transform, and then option shift corner points to make it a little bit smaller. And do you always convert it to a smart object? Uh, it's That's only when I'm going to resize. Okay, okay. And also if it's larger and you're making it a little bit smaller, Technically, you don't have to make it a smart object. You could just okay. command T for transform, option shift, a corner point, pull down. And because if you're going larger to smaller, it usually compresses the pixels a little bit. All but right. if you were gonna make something smaller, a little bit larger, you could convert it to smart object so it, it retains some of that quality. Obviously, if it's very small and you convert it to smart object and you want to resize it much larger, even as a smart object, it's gonna distort going to have some lack of quality okay quality okay so we have it to that point so i hit return and then we could see how she interacts so i could hit the shift plus as long as i'm in the top move tool and as i go through see you'll see the kind of creative blending that it takes on some of them are pretty abstract uh, see something like that's not too bad where it's kind of blending through and the notes are blend through, but you can still see a semblance of her features. Yeah. That's hard light. But I think what I want to do is work on the next kind of thing. That's kind of creative. Yeah, that's I like kind that. of cool. Yeah. But uh, the next theme I wanted to focus on, which is showing other aspects of layer masking. So I showed you how we had kind of silhouetted a subject and then knocked it out of the background with a layer mask. Let me show you how I would use a layer mask to kind of do some creative 
cutting out some of the background, but also blending. Okay. Okay, so here we are in the layer three. I click on the layer mask icon at the bottom, and you can see the layer mask is now attached to the right of it. And so once again, black will paint away, white will bring it back. So there's two ways that you can work with the layer mask. Um, first is if I hit B or choose the brush tool, and then I wanna hit the right bracket to make it larger, and I can hold down on it to kind of do a faster resize. Always remember that the options bar gives you your options. So the options for any particular tool, let me get water here, will choose the opacity will be like the strength. So if I bring the opacity down to like 30, when I paint with black so my foreground color, it'll do a partial blending like that. So I might like the way it kind of does a partial blend. I like that. Yeah, so it's a little bit softer and blends in. And then it's, I'm using a Wacom tablet, so I use the, the, um, the pen to kind of brush over and paint over, and the more I do, the more it kind of takes away. And so I could do like a little bit this way to blend her into it without getting that hard edge. Yes. I kind of just keep going over it and let it blend in. Oh, I really like that. Yeah, and then I'll just do the edge a little soft, kind of blend it in. Yeah. And then I don't like the dark areas there, so I'll kind of blend that out. Yeah, so I'll do something like that. Um, and then for the sake of lesson, um, let me do a uh, Command J to duplicate it. And then I will say delete layer mask, and then I'll just quickly add a new layer mask. So I was saying there's two ways. So another way is besides using the brush, if you look at the tool underneath, the gradient tool, and then you go to the top left in the options bar. If I choose the one that's black to white, it's the same principle. Black will erase, white will preserve. So I can then hover the gradient above that layer and as I click and pull down, it'll erase in a gradient fashion, oh. black to white. So if I hold down shift and click, or not shift and click, but option and click, it shows me a preview of the gradient. So black completely erased, gray partially erased, and white protects. So that's what the gradient is doing. In the name. So if I do a command Z, I go back one, command option Z or command alt Z on a PC, I go back multiple. I'm still in the layer mask. I'm in the gradient tool. So now if I were to click from the left to right, that's how you get that type of effect. Okay. So a lot of times when you see movie posters, this is the type of effect. This is how they create that type of effect. So they'll do like a gradient on a, a layer mask. And then you're not restricted to one or the other. So after I've done the gradient, I can go back to the brush and then I can go in and kind of add to that. So I can kind of blend even more so. So in this area, I don't need to use a gradient because that way I'll be able to go around the edge of her hair. And just kind of erase that. Nice. Yeah, it's pretty That is pretty. very cool. Yeah, isn't that nice? So yeah, layer masks are a nice way to go. So you can think of using a layer mask so you don't have to erase the edges of a layer. Mm -hmm. And you can also think of it as a way that you can use it creatively to partial blend a, a top image with the subject underneath or the design elements underneath. That is just great. I love it. Thank yeah, it's you. It's fun, right? Yes. Thank you so much. Now, um, another thing that I'm thinking of, like I always think like what's the next step? So the next step for me might be, well, let's, let's play with um, color. So quick review of the layers panel. So if you look at the bottom, on the right is a trash can icon. So obviously any layer that's selected, if I click that, it'll delete that layer. Second one is a new empty layer. So if I click on that, I could then paint on that layer and it would be floating above. So I could then blend it with the images underneath or I can uh, erase from it, but it won't erase the the actual layers underneath, yeah. Then there is the like group layers, which is when you start really getting into layers and 
you know, you might be doing like retouching jobs and you have various or photo compositing where you're working for maybe a client and you have various layers, you will then put them into a, a grouping. So I, as an example, I could select all these elements and then I hold command option shift and then click on it and it creates a new group from layers and then I could call it like, I don't know, retouched or photo composite. And then they're all nicely put into one layer. So this is a lot of times when I do a retouching job, I'll put it in this so I can show it before and after from the original to where I've taken it to. In this case, I'm going to go back to brush tool in the history panel to get back to before. I could also do command Z. Okay, and then we have these adjustment layers. So if I do an adjustment layer, I could do something like say solid color, and then you know, brighter blue. And so in this first thing, you're like, well, what good is that? It's just kind of covering over the whole thing. But once again, I can use the power of layer blending mode. So I can do something like go to overlay, and then I create this type of effect immediately. So it's very satisfying where I have it as just a kind of solid color as a layer. And then if I wanted to change it, I just click on the color icon and this brings up the color picker. So I could say, you know what? I want it to be like a, uh, it's a bit bright. <laughs> yeah, like maybe an orange kind of color theme. Cool. And then as you, s the beauty of also using adjustment layer and you have so many of these different options from color focus to uh, tonal correction, to uh, even more color, focus, vibrance, hue, saturation. And then these kind of um, invert posterized kind of like filter effects. The beauty is, is whatever you do, it's, it's in layers. So you can turn it on, turn it off. Mm -hmm. As I said, you can click on that color icon to change the color. And then on the right, it has a built-in layer mask. So I could say, you know what? Let me turn this on, turn this off, take a look. And as I take a look, I'd say it's a little strong on the face. So while the layer mask is selected, it has the white frame around it, and black is my foreground color, and the opacity is set to 30, 32, 30 in the options bar. When I paint with black, it's erasing from there. So I can make it so her original color comes in more around her, so I don't have that overly strong kind of orange on her. I like that. Yeah, see, so it's more natural. And then the beauty is, is even though I've erased that area and I like that effect, I might say, you know, the color is too similar to the original colors. I double click on that color. I could say, you know what, let's make it blue. Oh, that looks pretty. Ooh, that looks really pretty. Isn't that nice? Yeah. So that's the beauty of using adjustment layers. And, um, and turn them on, turn them off, change the color, use the built-in layer mask. Now, if you um, if you liked both that color and the one that you did before, you could do two separate layers, right? Oh yeah, yeah. You so just hide good, one. Yeah, that's a very good point. So. The the beauty of working in layers, that's what I love the most about layers, is you can do so many different options. So as an example, I just do a Command J or Control J on a PC. I make a copy of it. Of course, if it's the same color that you've just copied, it's gonna make it more concentrated originally. But I turn off the original one. Now I'm back to this one. I double click on the color. I can make it any color I want. Cool. Yeah, a little bright there, but. <laughs> I can bring it down so I can go and so yeah so as you can see in the color picker the spectrum goes from brightest green at top and then as you go down it's a bit darker 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 so you can choose the intensity of it nice yeah very good yeah okay uh, let's see so if I ever go to window Is that one. I'm just going to control tab cycle through. Well, another way of selecting is the pen tool, but maybe I'll get into that in a future lesson. But uh, maybe for now, this is pretty good for today. Oh, I've learned so much. Yeah. Thank you. And, and then just for the sake of um, review, 
what I'll do is I will save this as a layered file and send it to you. So you can kind oh, of just yeah, play around with it, experiment. And I'll try to save some of the other silhouetted ones too. Okay. Figure. But yeah, I hope that was helpful. Very and, much so. Yeah, and we'll, we'll do uh, further sessions and then just let me know uh, what other themes. So this is, you know, like photo compositing and layer blending modes. But maybe we could also go over retouching in the future. Okay. Know, go over like the pen tool to select. When you use the pen tool, you can do very precise selections and you want to cut out. Like I did a lot of kind of product photography that I had to cut out in jewelry. Mm -hmm. And so I use the pen tool to make it very exact. Well, I've tried the pen tool a couple times, and every time I just say bag it and move on. But So, yes, that would be a great class to work on. Yeah, and I've even created some diagrams that we can go over, like, you know, from triangle shape to circular shape to, you know, more abstract shape, showing how you would use the different points on the pen, pen tool. So, okay. All right, so great. So I think that, that was pretty good uh, for photo compositing some of the layer blending modes and layer masking. And then uh, we will work on another theme for the next one. Okay. Well, thank you again, Andrew, very much. Excellent. Hi, great. I'll it was fun. Excellent. <laughs> talk to you soon. Okay. Take care. Bye.